nowadays you can't find that stuff in good condition. It's all like dense. Welcome, welcome everyone to Top Cut Network. Today we have a 2006 match. We will be running this retro series every single Saturday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. We got Franco today playing LBS and Jeremy today playing Drag Trode. This is an interesting matchup, easily a coin flip on either side. I uh, don't see donks happening, but Jeremy is tremendously worried about getting donked today. So don't know why that would be, but we'll see. Lugia can donk. Um, takes quite a bit to do it, though. Yeah, I mean, my son got donked in game three out of the top eight. Uh, Blastoise versus Blastoise Mirror. Uh, he started Lone Jirachi and passed to his opponent, and his opponent went Rare Candy Blastoise. Ra ra ra. <laughs> that was the end of that. Good 80 damage. All right, that's useless. <laughs> so the rules in 2006 are a little bit different than what most are accustomed to. Um, players completely set up for their turn. Then they flip the coin to decide who goes first. Franco had no basics. If you do go first, you cannot draw a card. Yeah, I, I Nor can you I, I think, uh, play a supporter for your turn. Yeah. No. Yeah, the die on top wasn't actually a thing back in 2006. Um, it was you had to declare how many you were going to take. So if someone mulliganed five times, you could declare one, two, three, four, or five. But you had to declare that prior to drawing your first card for your mulligans. The dice thing became uh, part of the game, you know, putting the die on top of the deck to indicate how many mulligans had happened became part of the game beginning in 2007. Uh, it appears that Franco starts with a Mew. I didn't get to see what Jeremy started with. Okay. Sneasel. Yep. Rocket Sneasel. Um, Yeah, I'm gonna go first. Okay. All right, Jeremy has opted to go first. Good. All right. All right, we got Sneasel versus Mew. Yep. Uh, Jeremy played a Rockets Pokeball, I believe. He's got a Dratini on the bench. Grabbing maybe another Sneasel, and I think that was a Scyther there. Is he a Scyther? Yeah, I don't believe the Scyther helps much in this matchup. It's just the Sneasel. Rocket's Pokeball allows him to search for a dark Pokemon. Uh, dark Metal Energy. Uh, leave that, that. Or a Pokemon with dark in its name. And I'll drag off for 10. Yep. I believe so. Um. Search your deck for a Pokemon with dark in its name. Show it to your opponent. Dan, what? Dan, he can't take Sneasel with Pokeball. Why? Because it doesn't have Dark in its name. Okay. Hold, hold play. Ooh, man, say. We got a, a hold and play. Um, for the people who did not play in 2006, I, I didn't play start playing until 2007. Yeah. But, so he uh, has to. Dark metal energy counts as both a dark and a metal energy. And a metal. You just don't get the plus or minus that yeah. the typical darkness or metal energy would provide. Good. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. Now we got it all squared off. Okay. Franco opted to use Dragon Song from Dratini 
uh, forcing Jeremy to sleep. Jeremy flips tails, keeping the Sneasel asleep for the turn. He evolves into Dark Dragonair. It has to be active to use its ability. When Dark Dragonair is active, you may search out a Dark Pokemon. Ooh, Jeremy can't do anything. No supporters. Tails again keeps him asleep. I mean, next uh, next turn, you believe you'll have the Dragonite. Stevens for two. Oh, these hands are awful. The free retreat on Pidgeotto here will help with the drag off, assuming nothing else gets set. Bronco should attach an energy somewhere. And neither one of them have very many uh, options on what yeah. they have available to them. I mean, once Franco gets the Pidgeot out. Yeah, but he doesn't have Pidgeot in hand. So you have a way to this grab is a it? very, very slow start for both decks. Come on, dice. Still asleep. Still asleep. That's awful. There we go. Oh, Finally got something. Holland's transceiver. <laughs> he's also got the Dragonite in his hand to evolve into the the Dragonite. Yeah, but I'm not sure you want to evolve currently. So he'll probably search out a mentor with this. He has a... No, Franco has a switch. Yeah, yeah Franco has a switch. Yeah, Jeremy will probably search out Holland's mentor with this. And uh, Leia Voltorb. Yep, there's a mentor. I believe he's going to take a, uh, a Voltorb for sure. Another Sneasel. He could opt to set Lunatone and Soul Rock here. He has the Lunatone in his hand, I believe, too. Yeah, he could set Lunatone and Soul Rock here, which would lock up the Pidgeot if he if Franco did have it ready to evolve. I believe he also, in his yeah, first supporter, so. grabbed... Uh, not the supporter with the Rockets <laughs> Ball. He grabbed the Electrode. Um... That, yeah, and that electrode that is just sitting in his hand. Right. Well, I've been asleep for two turns now. <laughs> to get the trode and uh, the dragon yeah, is also like in his hand. It doesn't say EX on it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just as long as it has a Dan, he has to discard a card for Holland's mentor. Um, I'm actually... Uh, no, I'm not going back in yet. Okay. Yeah, Holland's mentor says you must discard a card. Discard a card in order to play Holland's mentor. So yeah. he has to. Yeah. There you go. So he, I believe he prized the Soul Rock. That's why he went this route. When he went through his deck that turn, uh, I didn't see the the Soul Rock in the deck. Oh, finally, he's one for four on sleep flips. Dragonite lets me move the dark energy. Dragonite would allow uh, all the dark energy to be moved around on. That's Jeremy's choice. Yeah, as Jeremy's off, so as often as he likes, he can move a darkness energy from one of his Pokemon to another. Which comes into play with uh, Super Scoop Up, Mr. Briney's stuff along those lines. It allows you to retreat, uh, move your energy, uh, reattack uh, with a different Pokemon with uh, fresh life. Uh, it also helps with cards like Giant Stump. You can move your damage to the bench, then stump it away. Um, so Dragonite's here. power here is uh, extremely important to the functioning of this deck. Got a hit for there we 30. Go. So he just copied Pidgeotto. There's the Electrode. Yeah, once during your turn, if Dark Electrode has no energy attached to it, you may search your deck for a Dark or Dark Metal energy and attach it to Dark Electrode. Shuffle your deck afterwards. Uh, this, is the most obnoxious part. this strategy comes into play because you can use Dark Electrode just to pull the energy from the deck every turn and then move it with Dragonite. 
And it's also an electrode that doesn't have to blow up. Most electrodes, Electrode EX blows up, Electrode Prime blew up, Electrode GX blew up to get the energies out. So all this has to do is sit on the bench and... Right, so in, in a matter of a couple turns, uh, he can literally thin his entire deck of all the energy in the deck. Which will make his draws much better as the game continues to go on. It's a guaranteed two, uh, two accelerations a turn as well. Right. Franco's not in good shape here. Unless he could get the, if he get the Pidgeot, um, there's a chance that it might start looking a little better for him. But um, So Jeremy can move that other dark up. Yeah, so Jeremy could do 30 plus 10 for each dark. Dark. Um, then it does 10 more damage also. So I'm going to leave this here. Yeah. <clears throat> leave that like that. Was that you going to get knocked out this turn? Yeah, so 30. Well, let's do the math. 30, 40, 50, 60, yeah, 70. That would only be 80. He's got 10 on him. Yes, the mule will be knocked out this turn. Uh, dark ring for 80. Dark ring for 80. Discard the R energy. Discard the R energy. It's a card. Yeah, Franco's out of options here. He he started off extremely slow. Really never got anything going. Is that the top deck, the Drachi? Yeah. I don't even know that he has energy to attack with it. I don't know what he would possibly be swooping into here. That doesn't help. Could he be looking for something beefy to, to just Maybe take a hit? Take a hit. Yeah, but all the beef in this deck are. Our stage ones or stage twos. I mean, cast form isn't going to help him here. He has no. Oh, ah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Decker chat brought up that he could try to establish a Blastoise, but I don't. I don't think that would. Have... Right, Swoop Teleporter discards the actual Pokemon instead of putting it back into the deck like uh, current Ninja Boy uh, would do. I don't know if this format should have had special dark energies. <laughs> yeah, uh, wishing star. It's got to hit something here. He needs a mentor. There's a transceiver. Well, of course. And an admin. Um, Team Rocket's admin is literally N. Um, Except you get to choose up to. Yeah. That's the only real difference between the two. Now, Jirachi allows you to take any trainer card, right? Leave so. Um, I'm going to get still. Okay. Yep. I think this is where he's going to go for Pidget. 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 And then maybe this. Yeah, <laughs> Gordle? Or no, he's already played a supporter. I think he has. A rare candy in his hand. I thought I saw that. So maybe the school, but the, I, he doesn't have any supporters. Either. He needs a way to, to refresh his hand. However, drag off. Uh, if he lays a Squirtle here, Jeremy could in turn move the special energies up to the active and use drag off to knock out a Squirtle. I would have probably gone for the admin there, to be honest. Both, I mean... He's, he's had nothing all game. And I mean, Stevens would probably net him more. I don't think admin. I mean, maybe getting Jeremy down to four. Uh, but Jeremy has everything he needs to uh, to roll the remainder of this game. I think he actually it might not. But I think Jeremy only has three cards in his hand, so you've right. given him more cards, in fact. I don't think admin's an option here.
he drops that cast form again Franco can or Jeremy can just move that anything would hit 50 hit points right now even 60 hit points is in danger oh he passes so he took mentor Looks like he took Mentor with uh, his Pidget. Flip for sleep. I don't believe Franco has flipped for sleep for this turn. Tails. Ooh, lots of sleep. It's like auto paralysis this game. I, I Well, last week I, you know, on those POWs, I only hit one out of six of them. Jeremy has all four dark energy in play. Poke, poke plus. He could actually start attacking with Dragonite this turn, which was a strategy also used for the Dragonite deck. There you go. So we moved one off Sneasel over to Dragonite and then move one off Electrode back to the same Sneasel. Pro play. Dark Ring. When you have when you have this much control of the game, you could you could do pretty much whatever you want. Right. If I could have had a bigger hand, trust me I would have. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. I can't believe I topped that thing. Oh god. Wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> mentor. There's a mentor. He can. All right, Franco he is finally starting to go. Now, Franco does run some cards where if he's playing from behind, such as Pow, uh, Admin, there's things that can keep him in the game. Um He's going to have to set a Squirtle at some point possibly to get these things squirtles. going. Yeah, almost set two Squirtles here. Yeah, that's correct. So he doesn't just get dragged off. I do think he has a candy in his hand, too. So if he has a candy in his hand and he still has access to a Pidget, he could uh, get a Blastoise out on the field this turn. Oof. Is that a stump you yeah, for? It's, no, it's oh, power. Franco's quick searching this turn. It looks like he took Pow. He grabbed a with a mentor. He grabbed a Magnemite, a Squirtle, and a Porygon. He's contemplating grabbing the Porygon. Oh, I'm not going to get a Porygon. I'm going to get something else. There is the candy. I'm going to get. Uh, Oh, okay, okay. So, I think the four my suspicion was confirmed. Well, he did not have... That's, that shocks me because he took Pow with Quick Search. Uh, does not have a Blastoise in hand, so that Squirtle is susceptible. I'm not sure what the thought was behind... Do you still have to bounce anything for that? No, this is just... You can just straight up uh, catch it. Okay. Yeah. What is Pow again? Just a catcher? Yeah, Pow. Sorry. I, I put over shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just uh, gusted catcher affected up the one of the. Yeah, that that doesn't work electrodes. so much because Dark Electrode is, is can attack. Uh, uh, Jeremy would have to hit one of the rainbow energies in the deck. Yeah. So for that to oh, attack. We're and the, get a corner lock. And the Pidgey is. Weak to lightning. If there's one effective strategy that might get him this game, it is isn't the corner lock. This will at least get him a turn. More energy is coming to hit the field. So this guarantees Franco to at least get one more turn of quick search. Unless Jeremy has a switch or a briny in hand, there's no way to get that electrode out. 
There's also no way to attack with it without the rainbow energy in play. No, it does not, uh, Bob. How many cards in here? Uh, four. So the Magnemite is the basic of Magneton. The Magneton and the Electrode are the ones that force you to bounce an energy back. The Magnemite does not. It just becomes a single colorless energy. Desert Ruins hit the field. Uh, <clears throat> and, an and Desert Ruins, if I'm not mistaken, hits... EX is over 100 HP, I believe. Something yeah, like that. EX is over 100, so Sneasel's immune to it. Uh, Desert Ruins is not currently hurting anything on Franco's side of the field. <laughs> However, uh, the Stadium War has begun. Stadium Wars were a huge thing back in 2006. Some some decks running upwards of six stadiums uh, to make sure that they win that war or win that battle. Unfortunately, Mew Trick did not make the top eight. No, in the Mew, votes. Mew Trick's awful anyway. Boo for Mew Trick. The superior deck from Worlds 2006 is going to be played today. Hello, Swibman. I'd like to throw a shout out to Swibman. He's joined us uh, both weeks in a row. Bob McDougal, thanks for joining us here today. I believe all the energy that isn't a rainbow is on Jeremy's side of the field right now. Yeah, Jeremy just needs to... Yeah, um, with the with the Desert Ruins, I'm all the EXs in this deck, because there's also a, a Scything. All of them are, are under 100 HP, but all of... Uh, I believe all the Francos are above, so, so it's going to take... The strategy that Jeremy has taken damage. here is really one that a lot of players um, have taken and lost the game. You don't ever want to put all of your energy on one, one Pokemon. So if there were a way that Franco could kill this Dark Dragonite this very turn, um, Franco would take complete control of this game. Obviously, he would need a lot, like Pow. He, he does have a stump in his hand as well. Um, yeah, if, if you stump him, Jeremy's just going to get rid of the Electrode. So, but the Dragtrode deck relies on the movement of the energy and keeping the energy in play. So, by putting it all on one Pokemon, uh, it puts those energies at risk. And, you know, losing all four special darks in the same turn would be detrimental to the Dragtrode deck. He top, did he top deck that Blastoise? He did. That wasn't his quick search. So. Now he just needs. Well, he can't go Steelix yet. You need Onyx. Lugia. Don't want to pop Lugia out there yet. You need to be able to. Exchange with the Sneasel. I believe Rocket Energy has, counts as too dark for Rocket Pokemon? Yeah, it counts as too dark. Um, our Energy, yeah. It counts as too dark. It only gives you plus 10 damage. So it's... A double dark energy attachment, so you can attach it to Sneasel and use the bottom attack with Sneasel and get plus 10 damage with it. With So it's only two energy cards at risk on the Sneasel. Uh, technically only one because the R energy gets discarded after it's used for that turn. So you're only putting one energy at risk when you're out there attacking with Sneasel, which is ideal because they force it forces them to put up something to deal with the Sneasel and then the drag chart player still has all their energy in play to follow up with an attack to take care of the big attacker they used to handle the first Sneasel. He discarded the stump for the mentor to get the Onyx cast form. It appears to be a Celebi. A Celebi. 
So he is trying to set up here. Uh, once Blastoise gets going, it'll just be a race for the energy. So uh, Franco has attackers like Ladio Star uh, that can take out a Sneasel or a Dragonite. He can pop that transceiver back in his hand if he wants. He to. does have a stone for uh, Steelix EX, which can mudslide the bench. Oh, boo! <laughs> Top deck to Stevens. I believe Franco's holding that rare candy Blastoise to surprise Jeremy with a rain dance. There's no way he could drag it up or snipe the bench, so the Squirtle is safe. Yeah, he can't get that. He can <laughs> wow. What an excellent strategy Franco has played here. Corner locking until you get set up was awesome. That that POW hand extension um, after the first two prizes were taken was absolutely the play. Now, had there been a rainbow energy in play, this could be a very different game. But because there was no rainbow energy showing uh, and Jeremy only had three cards at the time, this has been an extremely effective play. For Franco yeah. to allow him give him the time he needs. This is his third turn behind corner lock. This has given him the time to set up and at least compete in this match. As I said, the effective corner lock. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, this this uh, drag trout list does run Mr. Briney's compassion, but uh, Jeremy has yet to see it. Franco's got quite the hand set up. He's got. Cast form, he's got Blastoise, he's got Celebi, he's got I think he's got he's got stuff. Yeah, I think Jeremy made a Ladios, made another Ladios mistake Star. by not moving that energy around. I would totally balance that energy and as much as Pidget. possible. So he could if he can get another Pidgey on the field. So we need to pay close attention to the Blastoise deck. Uh, attaching the cast form for turn is extremely important. Uh, you had to declare the water energy rain dance every time prior to setting your energy for turn. And players got in the habit of actually saying, I'll attach cast form oh, for turn. Oh, there's the Blastoise. Yep. Energy rain. When you energy rain, you put one damage counter on the Pokemon that's the recipient of the the return of the, yeah, cool. the water energy. <laughs> it's a good admin. It's going to go down very quickly here. Honestly, with the way things are going, I might just. I don't think those Sneasels can get over Blastoise's hit points either. So if he were just to outright attack here with Blastoise, that could be a, a good strategy, especially without the rainbow showing. Uh, the rainbow showing, I believe the Dark Electrode can get over Blastoise hit points. That's a good card. Good first card. A scientist will get him out of it for sure. I think he got the Lugia here. Or was there a counter stadium? Uh, man, I don't play basic energy. <laughs> I'll power straight back a uh, water. Yeah, this Steelix. He really needs a Steelix here. Oh, I have to have no special energy also. <laughs> Oh, wait, no, no, no. If you do it, you have to have no yeah, Power energy. Tree has. Uh, Power Tree allows you to search your discard pile for a basic energy, assuming there's no special energy in your discard pile. Since Holland's cast form does not count as an energy in the discard pile, Blastoise player use Power Tree effectively to continue the, the onslaught of dropping water energy in play. I'll discard the Dragonite. You have six, so I'll draw four. So by discarding the Dragonite, one of the strategies oh, that yeah. I used, I knew that, that nearly all, <laughs> no, you know, 90% or more Dragonite decks only houses. run two Dragonites. So if there's any way you can kill that Dragonite, so now Giant Stump becomes extremely effective. All right. 
Bronco's hand is stacked right now. And again, with the absence of... Um, a power trick. He may not have to corner lock this turn. No, I, th I think the right play here is to mudslide the Sneasel on the bench for 100 and take those three energies out of play. That takes a fresh Sneasel right off the bench. Uh, you will only have to combat the other Sneasel, which has um, 40 damage already on it. I can't imagine Jeremy would put his uh, all four of his special darks at risk by attacking with Dragonite, especially considering he's discarded the other Dragonite in the deck. I know Pokemon Retriever's a thing, but I'm not sure that Jeremy's in a positive position. Not spreading those energies out is actually hurting him really bad right now. Because not only do you lose, you know, one of the four Sneasels, your second one has already got 40 damage on it. Uh, third and fourths may or may not be in the deck. Um, but you lose those three energies, most importantly. And it, and it goes to the Steelix's absolute advantage that every EX in this deck is, in, in Jeremy's deck, is under 100 HP. Right. So it's as simple as, you know, finding the cast form to to popping, you know... Uh, right, which Mentor or Transceiver. Yeah. So the outs in the Blastoise deck are, are tremendous at this point. I'm thinking maybe setting up the Porygon. Yeah, there you go. Setting up the Porygon to ensure that you consistently have draw is absolutely the way to go here. Power tree. And mudslide the Sneasel. There you go. That's absolutely the play here. For two prizes. Uh, the, now he, does he, can he deal with even, you know, if he's going to struggle dealing with the Blastoise, he's got a beefy Steelix also. Yeah, he's got to handle the Steelix. Without the Rainbow Energy in play, the Blastoise is absolutely an attacker. Uh, the issue here now is um, all four of the special Darks are in play. So who do you move those two to attack knowing that that Steelix is going to kill it? I mean, the Dragonite can take two hits. Yeah, Rocket's Pokeballs is tough here because uh, all the basics don't have Dark in their name, and it cannot pull out a Sneasel, so he can only basically pull out an evolution here. And that Dragonair is completely useless without the second Dragonite. Might have uh, just been the thin the deck. Yeah, so you're not so drawn into it, right? Not drawn into it. Or... I mean, he does have Scientist in hand. Uh, he could also be searching out. No, uh, can't do that. Dark Electrode bring our energy? I... No, can't do that. Why? Because it has to be Dark or Dark Metal. No, I can't because it's not Dark Electrode. Oh, okay. has to be Dark or Dark Metal. Dan, we need to get like a little red button that I could be like, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> the judge bell. Just yeah, so it. Jeremy went through all of the energy. I'm assuming the fourth dark metal energy is in the prize cards because uh, he was not able to you to pull anything out with uh, darkness navigation for dark electrode. Can I get our energy? Can I get rainbow energy? As those are not dark nor metal, dark metal in the deck, so... Jeremy's options are extremely limited here. Like, does he pull a darkness energy up to the active? Pardon the ambulance if you just heard it. Fly by. If, if, if he does that to retreat, that leaves him with three special darks in play. He cannot deal with that Steelix right now. He has no way to do it. I mean, this just shows the power of, of the Blastoise deck that... Or when this game started, it looked like it was... Uh, it was going to be a quick game, and now Blastoise appears to be in. Now the 120 hit points on Dark Dragonite is going to be something to deal with. I'm pretty sure Lottie, that the Blastoise Dex runs Latios. It's in his hand. 
which allows him to hit stage twos. Some some of the other ones run Latias, which allows him to hit an EX. So depending on which one this Blastoise deck runs, uh, will determine if he can deal with that Dark Dragonite or not. Okay. Laying another Voltorb. Mm. Yeah, claw swiped here for ninety. Due to the darks. Special darks. No. Oh. So Franco's holding his out right on the top of his hand there. So that's the Latios. He's got the Lugia too. He's got another blast. Well, Lugia, yeah, Lugia would pop it, wouldn't it? But he needs the cast form. So if he could go Lugia here, Steelix's retreat cost is two. And, and, and getting the cast form won't be a problem. It's got Pidgeot and Pidgeot. Right, Pidgeot. right, right, right. And he has the ability to get another one. Right. So Lugia to. can get over. If, if Lugia pops this Dragonite, that game is over. But he could also rain dance to the. So <laughs> yeah. <I'm not> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> well done. I'll allow it. It's good. I like it. Uh, it's so funny. Uh, if he can get that uh, Steelix out of the active spot here, which he, has, does he, have he could quick search the switch if he wanted, um, assuming he has cast form in hand. Yes. yes. Absolutely. So Franco did mudslide the Sneasel with three Dark Metal. So when you're playing against Dragtro, you don't necessarily worry about the Pokemon. You're trying to chase the energy. You're trying to put them in a position to where they need their energy in the active position to attack you. There's a transceiver. Because once you get the energy out of play, Dragtro just cannot, cannot keep up. But yeah, I think if you... If you look at your discard pile or like look at your deck first, I don't think you can go back to your discard pile. Right, right. Right. So they're discussing the Holland's transceiver. So back in 2006, transceiver was worded where you can search your discard pile or your deck and pull a supporter with Holland in its name. Uh, back in 2006, some players would play the transceiver and then start to go through their discard pile before they went through their deck. And that became an issue because you're fulfilling one of the requirements of the card. Even if there's no Halan uh, supporters in the discard pile, you fulfilled the action of, of the card. The discard pile was public knowledge, so you, you basically had to choose one or the other. Yeah, Franco's loading up now. Did he hit that cast form? Come on. Did he quick search yet? No, he just did. Yep. So he needed to hit a switch and a cast form, basically, or a brineys and a cast form, but he can't brineys now because of the scientist. I mean, look how low that deck is. <laughs> yeah, he went through his entire deck here in the last three turns. Yeah. And keep in mind, keep in mind, Pidgey is the hero of this game. He was clutch locking, clutch locking the electrode until he got the ideal setup. Oof. Elemental Blast, so... Oof. Now that he has Ideal set up, it's going to be extremely difficult for Jeremy to keep up. Oh, that card. It's not looking very good. All, all those, all the energy, all four special darks are in the discard now. All four, spe three special, the metal, darkness metal, in the discard. That POW Pidgey lock was extremely Ooh. effective and yeah. gave Franco the three turns he needed to kind of mentor, quick search a couple times, get his board in a positive state. And he's protected right now against admin. All of Jeremy's energy is out of play. Mentor and discard and the soul rock. The double sneeze. Yeah, Lunatone soul rock right now would hurt Franco a little bit with an, uh, combined with an admin, but I'm not sure there's a way. You know, if, if you drop Lunatone and soul rock and pair it up with admin or giant stump here would do well 
as well. If Jeremy could hit a you know, giant stump. I think they're both oh, in discard now. Yeah, I think Jeremy's well aware this game is is passed over. Yeah, I guess I need you to prize like all your switches. Um, double dark, drag up a Steelix and do twenty to it. Sure. Yeah. So, Franco does have Briny in the deck. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm also positive the deck ran switch. Uh, this game is, it might be tied in prizes, but it is nowhere near tied yeah. in game game state. <clears throat> the Blastoise deck, there's, well, that wasn't a snap there's nearly no <laughs> oh, way no, this Blastoise <laughs> deck could lose at this time. Uh, Jeremy could pull some shenanigans like Giant Stump and then somehow get out the Lunatone Soul Rock and Admin Franco down to one. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> um, that would give him some time, but. Oh, oh he was under the scoop face. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, that. there's like four once different the, once the energy, cards that gets it. I was like, I guess I'm just picking one. Yeah. Once like, once that energy gets out of play on the Dragonite deck, it's extremely score. difficult. And Jeremy spent, yeah. you know, his first four or five turns uh, digging out all the energy so quickly. Once he got... Uh, there were two in oh, okay. I think, once uh, I don't know if I one or not. once no, Jeremy I mean, got all that energy out of the deck, the fourth special dark being prized wasn't really a tremendous deal. Yeah, for sure. I think the biggest mistake was not spreading out the energy. One here, one here, one here, one here, and just yeah. losing all three energy in one turn. Um, that's kind of a common mistake for Dragonite players. Uh, the most experienced players will balance those energies out one, 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 and only take them out as needed instead of digging them all out very quickly and, and uh, putting them at risk. So... Pidgey is the real MVP of this like, game, as, as you said before. Right. Pidgey yeah. sat there and just cornered, right. and cornered, and cornered, and cornered. What an amazing play by Franco to even see that. The, the, the POW hand extension, uh, pulling up the Dark Electrode, and then cornering for three turns while he set up. What an amazing, amazing play. That gave him the four turns he needed to actually get Blastoise up and going and uh, start knocking the energies out of play for Dragtrode. That game played out fairly commonly. It's fairly common on how that... Uh, granted, both decks started off real slow. I think Jeremy started off a little bit faster. He hit the first Mentor, but uh, overall, Franco made a great play with that POW and then Pidgey Clutch to give him the turns he needed to overcome the uh, early deficit. What a great game. We'll be back shortly for uh, round number two.